So I guess at this stage I need to show a circuit diagram. Um, but uh, I'd say this terminal block is where the choke uh, would normally be in the circuit. Um, so I'm about ready to put some uh, mains on it now and uh, just look at the output voltages of the, uh, the mains transformer. Oh, what I forgot to say was uh, I haven't got the insert for this fuse holder so um, I think what I might do is just put a, a lamp uh, across there, a mains bulb. Uh, so as I've got a, a light bulb in series with the circuit. I should be working in my workshop um, but my workshop is in such a state I can barely get in there at the moment. Um, so I'm working on the kitchen table and uh, not necessarily doing things uh, very professionally. Um, but uh, I want to get on with this and uh, so I'm, I'm uh, doing what I need to do. What I've done here is I've mounted a little fuse in the radio. Just zoom in and uh, hopefully get it so that uh, so as you can see what's going on. This is the the mains lead. Let's try and get it all in shot. This is the mains lead that's coming in. The live wire connects uh, to the end of the fuse carrier. I haven't got the, uh, the the second part of the fuse carrier, so that's missing. Um, so what I've done is I've, I've actually soldered a little fuse onto the stud there and then I've got a, a wire coming off the other end of the fuse. Uh, if everything should go wrong and uh, the fuse blow and uh, or if the, the glass should break, the end that will be free won't be connected to the live it'll be the other so that's my concession to safety it's it's, it's not necessarily good practice for say I'm, I'm working in uh, uh, conditions that are a little bit awkward at the moment and what I've done in fact I've connected a light bulb um, in series with that fuse and uh, just see if I can okay so I'll bring it in there Okay, and you can get to see it from where I'm standing. Okay, so that's the live coming in through to there. There's no fuse in this fuse holder. I put a little temporary fuse there, and I put this uh, white wire on the end. And the blue wire is going to the uh, the other side of the fuse holder, and that grey wire then comes off to. Um, a switch at the front of the equipment, the mains on off switch. Okay, and uh, I've checked out the transformer and I know that the transformer is okay. So really, I don't need the series lamp. And uh, if you weren't watching, I probably wouldn't include it. But uh, as, as you're watching, I thought, well, I'll, I'll do things and um, talk you through it. The idea of having the lamp is if uh, there is a short on the transformer, which uh, I don't anticipate because we've checked it out, but if, there was a, if it was going to draw a lot of current, uh, the lamp would simply light up and it will limit the current that flows uh, in the radio. So it's, it's damage limitation, I say, um, uh, but I'm, I'm only doing it because you're watching. <laughs> Uh, but what I will do, because it's, I try to get into the habit, I always um, have uh, some safety glasses. I know these capacitors are awful and really they want replacing, but I'm not setting out to re restore the radio. I simply want to get it up and working. So these capacitors could go pop at any time. Uh, these are a little lightweight glasses. I put them on, I'm not even aware that I've got them. But if one of these things go off, um, then it's a bit of a surprise. And I will just point out that this radio hasn't had voltage on it, as far as I know, since uh, 1996. That's the last uh, note that uh, my friend had put in his uh, notebook. And um, I don't know how many years before that that it uh, may have been without volts. Um, so I say, there's, there's, there's reason to have uh, a little bit of caution. Um, uh, if one was looking after this professionally, then uh, I guess you would just change all of the capacitors before you did anything. But uh, say so that's not the uh, the object of uh, the exercise for me. 
Okay, we're working in real time. I haven't uh, plugged this radio in before and uh, I'm going to do it now. So let's just uh, put in the plug in and that's switching the mains on. And uh, okay, that's probably about uh, what I expect. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking at the camera to make sure. It... Okay, uh, so now what I need to do is uh, check some voltages. Uh, I'll move the light out of the way and get my camera into position. Right, the uh, volts are back on, and uh, remember I've got the uh, 100 watt lamp in series, and we're on uh, 240 volt mains here or uh, thereabouts. And I'm just measuring the volts into the transformer. Uh, so because we've got the lamp in series, that's uh, uh, 164 volts, I'm going to call that. So 164 volts AC. So the uh, mains transformer is expecting a, a diet of uh, 240 volts on its uh, primary. It's actually getting a uh, let's have a look what I say it's actually getting 164 volts so if we divide 240 volts by the 164 we get a ratio of 1.46 so all of the voltages are going to be down by that ratio so now I'm going to measure the output voltage um, which here is uh, 0 to 250 and that should give me uh, about 171 volts. That's coming in at 184, so not a million miles away. And the other side, 187. So no surprises there, that looks good. The five volts divided by the 1.46 should give me about 3.4 volts. 3.6, not gonna argue with that and the 6.3 volt uh, tap for the filament should give me uh, about 4.3 volts. And so you're seeing this just as I am seeing it. So I haven't done this before on this equipment and there's uh, 4.5 volts. And then there's another uh, set of tappings over here for uh, some other filaments. And again, that's 6.3 volt tapping uh, so divided by 1.46 should be 4.3, it's 4.5. I'm not going to argue with that. I'll just go back and check the mains again. Very difficult trying to see around the camera. Um, and again, that's uh, 166 volts now. So I guess uh, the, one of these uh, capacitors has uh, been conditioned. One of them's not in circuit yet because the choke's still missing. Uh, what we can do is uh, go to DC and see oh, um, yeah we'll go straight to DC and see if we're making any DC volts so that says we've got a rectifier that's producing 258 volts DC um, so so far so good oh by the way um, this is not a, a, a good test because we've got uh, really low volts on the filaments so Bloody, that made me jump. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got really low volts on the uh, filaments, um, uh, but it's it's indicative that uh, things are looking okay. I can't find a uh, suitable choke in all of my other possessions, so I'm going to rob one out of uh, another piece of equipment just to get me away. Uh, this is the choke that I'm going to use. I don't know the value of the choke that was originally in the Edistone, but uh, given that this is the only one I've got access to at the minute, uh, that's the one I'm going to use. Uh, it's about three inches by one inch by about two and a half inches, and uh, its value there is three Henry's. So I'm on the inductance range here so I've got 100 uh, there times 0 0.03 so 3 Henry's. I'm not sure what current it's good for I know the radio I think pulls about 140 milliamps um, so it'll certainly be okay for a short-term test <laughs> 